Hello team, welcome to the Fast Master Show. We are still very early. We're in day three of the two minute drill initiative. Uh, the purpose of this call is to get into what in the heck the business plan phase one meetings are, how to do them, why we do them. Um, and I got two very special guests with me. I got Jordan Barnett and we have Greg Miller with us. So those two guys are gonna go through a little bit of their thoughts, their perspective on the phase one meetings. Uh, and then they're going to give us a role play of what that might look like with with a lumber yard. So without further ado, Greg. By the way, Dave, I uh, appreciate you guys doing this. This has been, a, I think, a great useful tool. And we, we use these YouTube videos and, and certainly with my team. And it's a great way to kind of at their leisure use this, right? So, um, you know, as you mentioned today, we're going to talk a little bit about the phase one business plan meeting. And I think, you know, really... Last year was a good, a great, great year as kind of a baseline in the sense that, you know, for those that were around last year, the ability to kind of get out there and, and we kind of broke it into two parts, you know, a, a fact finding type of mission and then followed up with a little bit bigger meeting. And I think, you know, the, the, when we talk about these phase one meeting, you know, even this year, there's a few key things we got to, we got to think about and they don't always have to be this big, you know, 45 minute to hour type sit down meeting. Um, we can kind of, we have the ability now, I think, uh, whether it be a, an impact event and we can, you know, create time with that person of, of interest or the person we need to talk to within that, just by inviting them over to the table during the event or post event, you know, now certainly there's some tips along the way that I think, you know, our standard, uh, procedure that I, I think are great, you know, whether it be, you know, an email ahead of time or kind of laying the groundwork. Um, prior to make sure that the, the person that we want to talk to is going to be there, of course. But we really don't need to overthink these things uh, um, to a point. We can kind of keep them more informal and turn it more into a discussion. You know, it could be a, a, a 10 to 15 minute discussion and we can really get the information both ways that we want. You know, the, the big rocks, the things that I think we need to make sure we hit home are certainly that survey that you put out there. Um, the questions on the survey, and that's, and I'll, I'll talk more on that later. Um, I'm going to let Jordan talk a little bit about, you know, some of the keys that, uh, basically a template we can walk through in an agenda, the, the rocks we need to hit, and then I'll follow up with, we'll close it out with the survey. Greg, thank you so much. Uh, Jordan, just want to get your uh, perspective on how you get the meeting and, you know, what you're really asking a manager for. So uh, in order to get this meeting, I mean, again, it's just going to be a real quick uh, conversation, uh, asking him to stop by the table or, you know, after your impact event, stopping into the, the manager's desk or the office. Um, and really, you're just going to go through that if-then uh, questions, asking them, you know, what their walk-in traffic is, top pros. All, all those questions are on that uh, survey monkey, but you don't want to have that necessarily in front of you. Uh, I would highly recommend just memorizing the questions, you know, you're looking at like six questions and some of the stuff you might already know, but it's always good to get a refresher from the, the manager himself. Um, you know, be very informal, ask him the questions in a laid back uh, style and, uh, you know, take notes, but uh, you don't want the questions directly in front of you while you're asking them. Thank you, Jordan. That makes sense. Um, Greg, I want to get your perspective on why we even ask questions that we might already know the answers to or be able to sort of look on their website and figure it out. Why, why go through the effort of asking a manager the questions? Well, that's great, Dave. Um, you know, certainly I think it, it uh, further deepens that relationship, you know, with, uh, with the yard location, but also it hopefully, you know, they're, they're, they're confident in us that we understand their business, right? And so there's, a, there's that two-way street, street of communication and hopefully – um, you know, they confide in us and we, we simply ask the questions. A lot of times it turns into a conversation and we've all been there many times. Uh, we're surprised at where that conversation goes, you know, and so whether it be we find out about a, a major change in, in a decking brand or a shift in, in uh, business practices or, you know, the opportunity that they're expanding and, and acquiring three, four new locations, what have you. It's that trust level that we establish that allows us to do that. I think I want to just highlight a, a, a bit of your answer that you said. Just asking the questions, like understanding their business, you said that they would be more confident in our relationship. I think that's true. You know, you just you just take the time to ask questions. People feel like you understand them more. That way, when we come back to 
with some type of recommendation on product mix or our business plan phase two, is they're more likely to really take it seriously because you took the time to take them seriously and understand the business. So guys, I wanna to shift to a different part of this call and that is um, a role play in what the phase one will be. Cause I think that that versus last year is we're going a little bit more informal. We can go more formal if they'll let us, but really is, um, Jordan, you talked about inviting someone to your table. Just wanted to kind of role play. I'll, we picked an account earlier, so I'm gonna pop it up here on my screen um, so that we all can see it. And I have it as Gale House Lumber. This is um, one of Jake Adams' accounts. I think it's going to be a good one um, for us to look at. So one of the reasons why we picked this one is it's not uncommon for the whole team to have uh, accounts that are lagging behind. So we're towards the tail end of the year and we're at 42%. So obviously we're a bit behind schedule on that, um, but nothing that we can't come back from. So Jordan, if you want to, um, you and Greg, if Greg, if you want to act as if you are, and I'll pull up the business plan so I'll get the name right. So this would have done been completed with Bruce Smith. So right now, actually, if you look at this, we are we have done the PKs but from a pull through an activity, as we look a little bit deeper, is we're at 0% uh, with this account. So I might assume that what's going on here is that it's not a very heavy walk-in type traffic. So when we go through this, um, this role play, so to speak, I think that Jordan, it'll make sense for you to be asking Greg, who's posing as Bruce Smith, how you can get out to the field and, and meet more people. Um, so the PK has actually been very, very good Looks like we need to accomplish three um, TPCs, one ride along and one traditional event. Contractor events probably burnt by now. Um, it doesn't look like we have anybody for the uh, pro growth section. So now that I've gotten given a little bit of background on uh, this Gale House yard, if you guys want to go ahead and um, just assume that um, Bruce Smith is just approaching your table, Jordan, and then we'll just let it roll. Awesome. Sounds great, Dave. Ready, Greg? Awesome. I'm ready. Bruce, thank you for stopping by. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's good seeing you, Jordan. Good seeing you also. How's your day going? Not bad. Not bad. Thanks for the thanks for the heads up email too the other day. That was I'm glad uh that's why I'm here now. Absolutely. So uh, you know, I did want to have a brief meeting with you, you know, here to start the impact event. Uh, you know, we had the business plan meeting back in January, uh, where you and I sat down. Do you remember that? Yeah, yep. Great. Well, I, uh, you know, I wanted to hold myself accountable. I was looking at the business plan uh, today, or this morning, that is, and uh, I'm falling a little behind, and, uh, you know, I, I want to be held accountable for that. Um, I'm currently, you know, to give you a brief update, we're at 0% uh, uh, in the total activity completion, which is why, I'm, again, I'm here today, uh, which will help us increase that. But uh, a couple other parts that I may need some help from you, if you don't mind, is uh, I committed to doing three top pro connects through your yard. Sure. And uh, I haven't been what, able to do I one forget, yet. What's a top pro connect though? Absolutely. It is where I'm going out on your behalf yeah. to a job site meeting with your top customers. So oh, yeah. your top three pro customers, which uh, real quick, if you don't mind refreshing my memory, who are your top three pro customers? Sure. Um, well, certainly our biggest guy and, and our top builder is Dave Ellis Construction. They do a lot of custom homes, and they also do a lot of, of, of nice exterior projects as well. Okay. And then, yep. And then followed up by Mike Cook. Yep. He's, just an, he's a deck builder that does uh, focuses really on, on mass. You know, he does, there's only a few guys, but he's got about 10 crews that do big jobs. Yeah, then the last one is Felito Construction. They do a nice job. Um, they, they actually do a lot of framing for some of the national guys, but they do some stuff on their own as well. Oh, that's great. That's great. And which one, which uh, ones of your outside sales reps actually call on those guys? You definitely got to talk to uh, uh, Kyler Gifford. He's our head of sales. Okay. And I can actually, before we leave here or whatever, I'll make sure to bring you over to his office, just introduce you. Because be he's the guy you got to definitely connect with him, and then uh, Candace Frazier as well. Oh, okay. And are those the do those two handle all three of them, or is there a third guy by chance? Nope. There's this, those two. Then our third. There's a help. There's an inside support 
um, which is Steve Ratcliffe. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know Steve real well. Awesome. And do those, does Dave Ellis, Custom Homes, Mike Cook, and uh, Toledo Framing, do those three visit the store? Um, not typically. You know, we'll see them, you know, once in a while, but typically they're, they're out in the field busy. And we, sales teams goes out and contact. They'll come in for a special event or they'll pop in, you know, once in a while during the week, but, but not, not on a regular basis for sure. Yeah. As you can see, we're not really built up, built in for like retail. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's common. You don't get very much walk-in then, just no. mostly call-ins. Very light. Yeah. I mean, certainly. I know we've talked about this in the past, but you know, our early morning, we'll, we'll get a. We got them kind of lined up, waiting for for some odds and ends for the day. But for for the most part, it's it's not a heavy walk-in yard. Got it. That's great. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I didn't mean to get completely off track there, but going back to the business plan. Uh, again, you know, by me, if, if you don't mind, when I connect with Kyler, Candace, and Steve uh, to get out into those three job sites after this impact event, mm -hmm. um, you know, instantly we'll see that business plan activity completion rise all the way up to close to 100%. So we'll be right back on track to where we were to begin with. Does that sound great? No. Yeah, that's awesome. I know you guys do a nice job for us, and you know, we had that deal plan in July, but it didn't work out. That was more our fault, not yours. So, yeah, anything I can do to help you, uh, you've been an awesome partner of ours. That is absolutely great. And, uh, Bruce, real quick, you know, your top three builders, you know, I've definitely heard of them. I've, I've possibly even talked to them before, but in their eyes, how did, what, what kind of value do you bring to them, if you don't mind me asking? Well, the, certainly on the service level side, you know, they view us, uh, and hopefully we offer the products that they need, you know, so... Certainly service, value, and, and price, right? We try to be very competitive with, uh, you know, the surrounding yards. And and for us, uh, we're a big relationship yard, too. You know, most of our customers have been our customers for the last 15 to 20 years. Um, and we continue to do that. And certainly, um, the more we can do, uh, the better with them. Is there any particular category that is a little bit more important to you this year, uh, moving into 2019? No, I mean, certainly, you know, with the recent storms, like we'll, we'll see a big push in siding and roofing, you know, and, and, and trim product. Okay. Um, but there's been, you know, no, yes and no. I mean, we've always been a very, very good decking decking store. You know, we sell a lot of a high end, you know, the composite decking. That's been a big push for us. And we get great support from, from those vendors as well. But if I had a, yeah, certainly siding, siding and roofing. I really, I think that's going to be, a, it's been busy already. That's great. Teen is structural wood screws. Is that going to be pretty important for you this year? Um, yeah. I mean, I think all of our, our fasting options are very important, and I know certainly the job you guys do has been great. So, yeah, that's an, certainly an important category for us. It's a good margin item, too, by the way. Yeah, we hear that often. How about uh, – do you guys do much with engineered wood? Uh, yeah. No, we certainly – we sell a fair amount of engineered wood as well. You know, one thing that we do that separates us, we do a value that we have an in-house, we do in-house takeoffs. So that's been a nice, nice addition for us. And that, by the way, you should introduce yourself to that, uh, that guy as well. Logan Gibbs does a nice job for us doing the takeoffs internally. Yeah, I'll definitely make sure to connect with him. And then on the decking, uh, is, is the hidden deck fastening important to you? Or do you see a lot of guys face fastening? How, how do the guys uh, typically put that down? You know, um, We've seen a big shift over the last few years. Like pretty much all everything we sell now is is groove board decking. So I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but uh, we hardly sell any non groove material. You know what brand that you deal with is the best at driving pro product awareness and pull through sales? Well, there's a few to come to mind, obviously besides you guys. Um, but James Hardy, um, and a couple of reasons. You know, one they do a, they do a great job. Uh, earlier in the year, they offer a a program that they co-sponsor with us where it's a certification. So they become a Hardy Pro uh, certified installer and it brings everybody together. Um, and they said they offer that three times throughout the year, but the, the biggest one that we see is in the spring and we're, we're fortunate enough to be a part of that. That's great. Uh, Bruce, if, if you don't mind, you know, since we're not competitors with Hardy, would it be possible for us to get in on that and join that event? I could certainly, um, help facilitate that at least get the conversation started it's a hearty event but we have talked about um 
expanding that and having non-competing brands within. So yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Good job, guys. Appreciate doing the role play. Uh, I think that's very realistic, even though, you know, Greg was teeing up some of the answers. Um, certainly realistic, uh, pretty short to the point. Um, we're also accomplishing a KPA, so it's not like a standalone uh, meeting. Um, that means that you have to show up twice. You're doing two things at once, which is fantastic. Uh, guys, I appreciate it. I also have a special guest uh, that's going to be joining us uh, from California. We have our FSR Spotlight with uh, Mr. Jared Stamper. Uh, so we'll be kicking over to Jared in uh, just a second. Uh, but guys, I appreciate it and have a good rest of the day and uh, go get it. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, Jared, welcome to the Fast and Master Show. Man, excited to have you here. How are things? Things are going good, excited to be here. Hey, I just want to do a spotlight. You know, we're gonna be starting a new section here where we, um, you know, introduce kind of an FSR and another member of the team um, to the rest of you and just kind of, you know, learn a little bit about them and then also some of their tactics and strategies, um, you know, in the field. So without further ado, Jared, um, why don't you just, um, you know, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? You know, what's your family life like and all that? Sure. Yeah, no, well, I grew up in Southern California in a town called San Juan Capistrano. And I have one older sister. She's a year and a half older than me, Amelia. Um, she actually has her family out in Dallas right now. Her, her husband, her two uh, young little Hillian boys. And uh, I got my, my mom, Holly, and my dad, Bernie. Phenomenal people, raised me well, and uh, two of the best people I know. Awesome, man. So what's it like living in San Juan Capistrano growing up? What's it? Uh, well, it's great. I mean, it's you're in Orange County, so the area is phenomenal. People are nice, and uh, you know, I had, a, I had a pretty good upbringing. Sounds good, Jared. So, where did you uh, go to end up going to college? So, I actually ended up going to Chico State, which is Northern California, and uh, I majored in Health Services Administration. It took me it took me about five years to graduate, but it was five solid years and. Uh, if you've never been out to Chico, I suggest going. Total college town, small, small area, great outdoors activities, but uh, that was a great time. I, I really enjoyed myself. Very good. So uh, out of college, wh where'd you get a, uh, where'd you start off getting jobs? So yeah, I had a couple jobs, but um, the one I had last before I got with Fast and Master was doing basically uh, supplement sales. So kind of similar to what I do now as far as my territory, but not quite as big. Um, but after about a year and a half of that, I was pretty much done and looking for some new opportunities. And uh, what's his name? Mark Miller, the recruiter. Yeah. Yeah, he, he got a hold of me. And I think he, after talking with a couple of Fast and Master reps, he's recruited probably like half of them. So a couple phone calls with Mark Miller. Uh, I was able to get in a, get a meeting with you and Danny. And uh, we met in person in, I think it was Irvine. And, you know, I met with you guys, like what you had to say about the company, like what you guys had to say about the position. And I think pretty much the rest is history. How long have you been with us right now? It'll be two years in February. Yeah, and February. I know it's coming up very well. So, you know, over the course of the last, well, basically two years, um, how would you say that, you know, areas that you've grown personally uh, from the type of job that we have? Well, it was, you know, pretty much in my territory. I didn't know anything about the industry. I didn't know anything about, you know, what I was, what it was going to be like. So it was nice after a couple of months to get used to who was who, where I needed to report to, um, people in each account who were, you know, top dogs. And then we got, you know, I think about a year, maybe almost a year in, we discovered the Dixie Line Initiative, aligning which deck boards, which deck fasteners go with each store. So seeing that progress and the long hours it took, you know, certain long days it took, you know, connecting with certain people and putting that whole plan together was pretty neat to see it come to fruition. And now to see it, you know, the sales dollars increase, you know, you know, exponentially. So I think that's been neat in San Diego. Um, as far as LA, the BMCs where we've been able to achieve our LARR, which basically makes you able to be spec'd out on the certain plans. Yeah. So, I mean, now it just creates a so much more of an opportunity for us because before 
you know, sales were a little low in that in that area. So I think with this certification, it's going to be it's going to be great at going into the the end of this year into next year. So Jared, there's quite a few people on our team uh, that haven't gone through their initial business plans uh, yet. They just haven't been around for a full year. Um, what would you say, and what kind of advice would you give them? I think for the entire year, you know, it's a journey. But once you've set out and picked who you want you know, which locations you want to choose and you've met with each correct person at each location and what you want to do. It really is just focusing on what you need to complete, keeping track of where you are at all times. And then now we have this, this new, you know, completion percentage on where you can keep track of yourself. I think that's going to really help you moving forward. So Jared, uh, so where do you stand right now on your business plan completion as a whole? So um, I think I'm at like 45%, which is to be honest with you, at this point, pretty disappointing, but um, you know, I, I have been focusing my areas and other territories. So, but I, you know, I'm not I'm not panicked by any means. I do have a plan in place to, you know, get myself to where I need to be for the end of the year. Great. So what is uh so what is that plan? So for this week and next week, I'll be in the LA market hitting my BMCs, and uh, I'll be teaming up with the AZEC rep. And the ORPAC rep, we're going to go to each location that ha actually has my business plans account. Great. And uh, we're going to take the deck truck out there. So that's impact events. You know, that's connecting with um, each hardware manager on where I'm at, you know, doing the survey and then getting some TPCs in. And then, you know, when I'm out on those TPCs is, I think, going to be really beneficial is informing these guys that we have our LARR. Oh, excellent. That's a good point. Um, how did you get the deck truck going, you know, cooperate, do that? How'd you do yeah. that? Yeah, I've gotten to know the exec rep uh, in L.A., Paul Coleman, pretty well in the past year. So he, he actually schedules these out probably months in advance. And he's doing all the BMCs this week and next week. So I just kind of pick and choose which ones I would go to that were focused with my business plan. So I actually have about, I think it's around six, five or six business plans with BMC out of their you know, nine or so locations. So Jared, when, when we're talking about the business plan phase one meetings, how are you going about getting getting those meetings and inviting you know, the people that you want to meet with? Yeah, I think it's, it's important that you're not having this 30 minute sit down conversation and, you know, behind closed doors. You could even do it at your, your tabletop, you know, during your impact event. And I think it's important to, you know, write out the questions you want to ask and then fill those out accordingly and um, you know, make your plan for what you need to do. So when it comes to a, a winter buy, uh, which is something that we do obviously January, February, and March, California's got interesting weather, you know, in that you really don't have a, a downtime with snow, you know, and terrible weather. So people are building. Um, so you don't have a lot of yards that tend to stock up. So how are you going about like introducing what winter buy is, or at least like sort of planting the seed on any new products? Well, with every product that we have, they already know about. So I think it's just reintroducing, you know, is this going to be the right time for you? Um, you know, I think this would be a good match for this certain builder. He's a heavy builder in this area. He's seen the product. He likes it. Um, you know, I think this would be a good thing for you to have in the next year as far as increasing sales and, you know, separating yourselves from other products. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Jared, I want to thank you for your time uh, getting on here. Do you have any uh, last um, bits of advice or last last comments to make? Go Chargers. Yep. <laughs> See you, Jared. Thanks. Right, thanks, man. Yep. Thanks, everybody. It's the end of the call. Have a good one. Bye.